Hi, I'm Mignon Fogarty, Grammar Girl, and today's topic is irony. The reason I'm using video this week is because I've wanted to explain irony for a long time, and the Sarah Palin Turkey video is like a gift from God for explaining irony. <laughs> Here's this story. Palin was at a turkey farm doing a lame PR event that a lot of politicians do, pardoning a turkey for Thanksgiving. No big deal. But what came next was unexpected. She went on to give an interview in front of a scene where turkeys were being vividly slaughtered. I couldn't even listen to what she was saying. I was mesmerized by the executioner in the background. Is he really doing what I think he's doing? Yeah, he is. So here's why this scene is ironic. She went to the scene to pardon a turkey and she ended up highlighting a turkey slaughter. Now, there are many different kinds of irony, which is what makes it difficult to explain, but the most common definition is an incongruity between what might be expected to happen and what actually happens. A scene highlighting a turkey slaughter when people tuned in expecting to see a pardon is ironic because it's not what they were expecting. One great thing about this example is that it helps you see how setting and expectations are important for irony. If Palin hadn't been there to pardon a turkey, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been ironic. It would have just been an incredibly unfortunate uh, choice of locations to do an interview. And if she had pardoned the turkey in front of the slaughter scene, it would have been even more ironic. And we can look at this another way, too, to see how um, different things are ironic to different people. Because in the video, Palin doesn't appear to realize she's doing anything ironic. Now, she later issued a statement saying she didn't realize what was going on behind her, although the photographer says she knew. So, who knows what the truth is. But for the sake of explaining irony, let's assume she knew. Remember, irony depends in part on people's expectations. And we know from the campaign that Palin is an avid hunter. She shoots wolves from helicopters. She knows how to dress a moose. And, and she takes her kids hunting. So, it's, she knows where meat comes from. And, you know, most people don't think about where meat comes from. But when Sarah Palin wants to eat meat, she's not afraid to kill something. Uh, so, so maybe as a hunter, she saw pardoning the turkey as something that was ironic. In fact, if you watch the video from the beginning, you could come to the conclusion that she thinks the pardoning part is ironic. She actually elbows the guy next to her while she's giving the pardon. So, irony is when something happens that's the opposite of what people expect. And you can see how people who are used to hunting their own meat would see pardoning a turkey as ironic. And you can see how people who would rather magically believe that their meat just shows up in Safeway would think seeing a slaughter when they had tuned in expecting to see a pardon would be ironic. Irony depends on the point of view and the beliefs of the people involved. And here's another layer of irony. Um, I bet people on either end of the political spectrum don't see the irony of this situation. People who believe Sarah Palin is an idiot would expect her to do something this tone deaf. They'd say it's not ironic, it's expected. And people who believe Sarah Palin will be our president in 2012 would likely see this as another example of the media playing a dirty trick on her and making her look bad. To them, again, that wouldn't be ironic, it would be expected. So there you have it. To most people, this video is a clear case of irony. Turkeys slaughtered when they were expected to be pardoned. But Palin's seeming obliviousness and the likely opinions of people on the political extremes provide a great example of how difficult it is to pinpoint irony because it depends on people's expectations, which can be very different given things like their location, their past experiences, and their political beliefs, just to name a few. If you like this video, head over to iTunes, search for Grammar Girl, and subscribe to my audio podcast. And you can also get my book wherever fine books are sold. That's all. Thanks for listening.